Hello, crazy hair. I just, it, I just did this. Um, so I just got off the phone with the Denver Zoo. Um, I called a, a manager of concessions and she was really nice um, on the phone. And I found out they do serve Beyond Meat, which is great. And they do have, if I heard correctly, some milk substitutes, uh, alternatives. Um, I asked her how she felt about not going all the way plant-based with their food. And she said she didn't have any opinions. She didn't have any feelings. And I, don't, I think she just couldn't share a whole lot. But the reason why um, they have concessions of, they, she said, all kinds. And that, I mean, this is nothing against her, but... It just, that was the wording she used, concessions of all kinds, uh, for all kinds of diets, cultures, and varieties. She's talking about varieties. And I told her that, um, the facts, <laughs> I told her that the uh, leading cause of climate change and habitat deprivation and destruction is, um, Animal agriculture. I talked to her about if we we're going to bring people into a place to learn how to respect and protect animals, we should not serve them animals for lunch and snacks. Um, and she kind of thought on that a little bit. And uh, she said it wasn't really her place, that she would have to go higher up. I couldn't have that information, but she's going to forward. She has my email and my phone number. She'll forward it forward. And we'll see who I hear from. And what's interesting, when I did call, and we go through the different promptings for what you want to press to go to, I did hear that when you go to the Denver Zoo in between a certain amount of days in um, the first part of a month, every day of the week, you can get in up to 10 people for only a dollar each if you present your SNAP or EBT card. So, you know, government food there. Which, nothing against that, but... Um, you know, with that type of thing, you can also use your food stamps to go into like 7-Eleven. Like you can buy, which is, I'm not trying to, I know I'm kind of opening up something big here. But the point is, if we're going to have access to food because we really need it, we should be eating necessities. Like we don't need to have hot Cheetos if we're doing government assistance you know every day nobody should have freaking hot cheetos okay but as i'm saying like if we're in a place where we're hungry and we don't have money to eat we need to buy nutritious and healthy food so that we can get what we need you know and in honor of the other people who don't even have those resources who are hungry so you know that's my kind of in a nutshell on that so it's interesting that we can they could show government food um assistance and you can get in for a dollar up to 10 people and then conveniently they've got animal products available the zoo it sounds like they don't want to go um, plant-based anytime soon uh, or, or vegan I like to say because um, it's a lifestyle for me but I explained to her like about the morals and ethics she said she was mostly, mostly plant-based I asked her what animals she ate and she said turkeys and she said uh, chicken and I said so birds okay what birds do you eat or, uh, and then she said turkey and then chicken and then fish so I explained to her about that. She didn't mention dairy, um, but I brought that all up. I told her, you know, these are sentient living beings that are going to the slaughterhouse. Grass-fed, free-range, it, it, even even so, it's the worst because they're in a place where they are not even, quote, used to the suffering, you know? So they come from somewhere so beautiful, never seeing the concrete, metal, blood everywhere, other animals screaming, you know, that's it's terrifying. And it's terrifying for anyone. Um, so I explained that to her. They're sentient. They feel pain. Where you know, why do a little bit of something that's so destructive to the environment if we're going to supposedly in environment protectors, educating people? So I brought all that up. She said I seemed passionate. She appreciated it. And I thanked her for that. But I told her I don't wake up in the morning and say, I feel so good. I'm doing such a good job. I'm so passionate. No, I wake up because it's my obligation to, in every way possible, branch out, reach out, and help change so she was eager to get off the phone because i was going 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 i'm long-winded and i did appreciate it i could hear how she was defending it i talked to her about cognitive dissonance i um and i could hear how she was defending you know the what they were doing she couldn't really admit that it was wrong because then what am i doing here doing this if this is wrong you know am i going to get in trouble type thing so it was really interesting 
And in the end, she said that she appreciated what I had shared with her about, you know, veganism. She's maybe going to look into that. Think she could do it. And prior also in the conversation, I was talking to her about, you know, some percentages, you know, and uh, stuff like that. And she said, well, I don't know much about the science and that's just the science or, you know, um, I haven't studied the science. I haven't, you know, and I told her, well, you don't really have to be an expert. You know, you just, you can look it up and read it. The science is there. And I think she had said there was some kind of like controversy and then I brought in the science and then she said, well, she wasn't sure about the science and she hadn't read it or whatnot. I wish I had been like writing it down as she was saying it, but I can't write and listen at the same time very well. So I'm not trying to paint her as a negative person at all. I think that she just was kind of like, you know, the middleman. I told her. And when I when I was directed to her line, I left a message for her and she called me back. When I was directed to through her line, I told them I was calling to talk about a change in concessions and that's just who they, she's the woman on the phone. So, well, let me see who's in charge of that. And she said, okay, uh, such and such are, I'm going to patch you through. So, obviously, it has to go above her, which I was thinking that would be the case because, I mean, the concessions manager, you know, they're, it's beyond that. It's above that. So, I can't have the numbers to call anybody, but I'm, I'll just keep calling her back if I don't hear from anybody. And I'm going to stay on this. I'm just going to reach out like this and just kind of push. I told her also closing note. I told her, you know, I can protest. I can call. I can do this. I, but you have the power. You're in a position of power where you can talk to the person above you. You know, you can make the change or try to make a change within the system. That's the power you have, I told her. I said, you can be courageous, you can do the right thing. So, and towards the end of it, I think she was just like, a little bit, but, um, hey, no hitting, that does hurt. Tried to crack a joke at the end, and then she was really eager to get off the phone, so I was like, oh, sorry. So, Stephanie, if you ever see this, I didn't mean to uh, talk your ear off, but ask anybody I know, I talk a lot. I've got to stop Warren, he's going crazy over here with his hockey stick. All right, everybody, so that's just a little update, just little things you can do. Like, anybody can do this. You can call your local zoo, um, you know, you can just step out, go to a city meetings, all that, and do little bits here and there, and that's how it works. That's what you do. All right, bye, everybody.